This is the last part of this FPS Unity Bowl series. And the last thing we want to implement in our little game is a shooting mechanic for our enemy. Before the enemy was just able to patrol. By the way, the whole playlist is in the info card, just in case you haven't seen the other videos. But time is rare, so let's get started. 1909 games. Let's make games. We want our enemy now to be able to shoot at us. So as you can see, it is just patrolling. But let's change this pretty quickly. At first, let's unpack our prefab completely to, you know, do another one. And let's add a new game object and let's call this one shoot point. And this object should be at the position where you want the player to or the enemy to shoot from. So let's uh, select the shoot point, put it up a little bit and here in front of this cannon, let's just place it right here and we will see if the position is right when we shoot. Next, let's go to our flow machine we have on our enemy. As you can see, that's where we, you know, stopped last time. But now we want to have, we don't need the sequence here. I don't know why it is there. <laughs> Just let's connect the update function to our branch. So, and let's pull out the update function a little bit. And before this one branch right here, we need another one. So let's add unit and one branch, beautiful. And that should happen before this one. And what we want to know is if we are close enough to the player to shoot. So if the enemy is close enough to the player to shoot. So we need the distance between the enemy and the player. To get this, let's add a less logic here, you know, um, less. So, and we need two positions, A and B. And B will be the position or, you know, the distance, not the position. We need here a distance like 15, you know, unit and A will be the distance between the player and the enemy. So type in distance and we have a distance between A and B. A will be the transform.position of ourself. Transform.position. And we want to get the transform.position. And we need a new variable. And that variable will be the player and will be a type of game object and the object will be the player do we here we go here's the player and let's drag and drop it into our scene right here and let's get the position of the player so position dot get transform dot position dot get sorry and let's connect this. So now we are having our distance right here between these two variables. So our position and the position of the enemy. And we see if it is less than 50. And then, you know, let's go in here. If this is false, so if we are, you know, 20 units away, then it's false. So then we just continue what we have done before. But if it is true, so if we are closer, then 15 units. Then let's go and see that we make a debug.log, debug.log message. And let's say we want to say player is close enough to shoot. I don't know, <laughs> you know, just to see what is happening. So that debug.log we will see in our console later. Then we want to get our transform dot position again of ourselves also not of ourselves but of the enemy again and we want to set the new destination of the enemy because if we would not set a new destination then we would continue walking while shooting between the waypoints and we don't want that so set the destination to, to itself transform dot position. And like this, when we now enter the scene, oh, you should see that the enemy is patrolling as it was before, as you see here. And if we come closer, it's stopping. So it's not shooting because, you know, we don't set the shooting <laughs> mechanic, but as you can see in the console down here, 
player is close enough to shoot. What now will happen is that the enemy will rotate towards the player to be able to shoot, uh, <laughs> you know, the correct position. So let's grab this, pull it a little bit right here. So we want to set a local rotation, um, transform.local rotation, and we want to set it, not get it, because, you know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think you know why. So, and what we need is an Euler angle. So let's make it with X, Y, and Z. So let's connect this and at the moment, nothing is happening because it's set to zero. So we want to get the rotation of the player. So in which direction do we need to look to shoot at the player? For that, we want to get a variable of the player and we want to get the position. So transform.position.get again. So, and let's connect this. And we want again to get the transform of the enemy. So again, uh, get transform.position of self. And we want to subtract both. So subtract, uh, subtract. So there we go. A and B, connect those. those. Um, and then we need a look rotation. Here with these forward. So connect this to the forward and again a and then we need a new unit boiler angle get so like this we can connect this to grab this a little bit more far away so that we have enough space <laughs> we just want to get the y rotation so let's type in vector 3.y and we want to get the y so we don't need um, the whole rotation, just the Y rotation and connect it with our unit right here. And as you can see, when we enter the play mode, the enemy should look at the player right now. If it's stopping, you know, see, and it's looking at us, beautiful. So, but it's like a hard transform uh, rotation, you know? So if he's facing the other direction and we come to the enemy close enough, it's instantly rotating towards the player. Um, that's not the best way, but we will keep it like this. And now we want the enemy to shoot at the player. So we want to instantiate a new object that will be the bullet with the origin, position and rotation. So the position is the shoot point we did before, so we need a new variable that's the shoot point and it is of type transform and let's search for sh shoot point there we go and let's drag it into our flow graph right here and we need to get the position and the rotation transform dot position again <laughs> So we want to get the transform.position and we want to get the transform.rotation. So now we can connect both to our instantiate object. And the object will be instantiated after looking to the player. So let's connect these. And what object will be appearing? So we need to make a bullet object. I did one before right here, but let's do a new one. So let's create a new 3D sphere and let's make it smaller because <laughs> this, this is way too big. Oh, I think that's okay. That's okay. Yeah, that's okay. And let's set the position to 0, 0, 0. Where is it? There it is. Let's call it bullet. And let's give it a new material. Oh, let's you know here let's drag it up and now let's create a new material and let's call it bullet material um you know i think yellow is nice and we want it of course to you know have an emission so it's glowing oh uh, yeah come on like this bullet material and this is our bullet beautiful just let's now make a prefab here we have bullet one back to our enemy and to add a graph and here we go with the bullet bullet one let's test 
our little um, enemy right here. And he's looking at us and we have a lot of bullets. <laughs> you see that? You see that? Beautiful. Okay, but the bullets are not moving because they are just appearing, you know? So let's go to, at first, to our bullet, open the prefab again, and let's give it a rigid body. And let's turn off the use gravity because, I mean, it's a laser, it's just flying and flying, you know? It's not falling. <laughs> and let's set uh, to continuous, and we need a new flow machine. Make it to embed and edit the graph. Okay, so in the start function, we don't need the update function right now. In the start function, we want to set the velocity. So it's a rigid body dot velocity and set of the bullet itself. And let's add a new unit because we want to see in which direction we want to go. So let's type in forward, uh, transform dot forward dot get. And we want a new float for, you know, the speed of the bullet. So type in float, literal, and let's head it to, I don't know, let's set it to 20. We can change it afterwards if it's too slow or fast. And let's multiply both. So multiply A to B and connect this to our set velocity. And like this, we have the bullets shooting. Let's see how it will look in the game. Oh, and it's working, but as you can see, <laughs> it's pretty fast <laughs> and not really working like um, it should work. Oh my god. But it looks pretty, to be honest. I mean, it's kind of a particle system, but we don't want that, of course. So the first thing we want to do is let's go back and edit the graph and on collision, on collision enter, we want to destroy our game object yeah <laughs> to not have too much bullets in the scene destroy so game object dot destroy which game object of course it's self and like this we have done everything we need to do with the bullet you see now it's destroying itself when it collides with something but the fire rate is you know, a little bit too high. So let's bring the fire rate down. And we will do that with the enemy flow machine. And we need two new variables. So the fire rate itself. And that will be of type float. And let's set it to, you know, let's set it to two. And the fire timer. Also type of float. The value is zero, that's okay. We will reset it anyway. So and we can now delete this transition because we need one more branch. And what do we want to see? We want to see if we are able to shoot again or if the enemy is able to shoot again. So for that we need to get the time. Get time. And we need to get the fire timer. So here we go. And if the time is greater, so let's say greater than the fire timer. So let's connect all. If it is greater, then we can shoot. So then we can instantiate a bullet, but we need to reset it. So let's go and take the fire timer and mm, copy and paste the time and get the variable fire rate and add both of these. So add the get time with the get variable of our you know fire rate and we want to then set this to our fire timer and then we want to set this not get this sorry so add unit fire timer and we want to set the fire timer to the fire rate so back to two seconds and that should happen after you know creating the bullet so like this you can see we are not shooting or the enemy is not shooting that fast anymore and that's you know it's just fair <laughs> so you see one bullet and another bullet okay two seconds is maybe too long so let's destroy it and as you can see and that's pretty bad <laughs> um we are not destroying the enemy at all we are just destroying the you know visuals of the enemy 
So let's go back to our enemy. And as you can see, we have no collider on this, so we cannot destroy it. We just destroy the cube right here. So we have this box collider. It's and you see this box collider is, is okay, but you know, we don't need it right here. So copy this component, remove it right here, and paste it as a new one on, on the enemy. And then you can see we need to oh yeah, it's way too small. Um let's go and make it the right size. So, and now we are done. We have our basic FPS game with the enemy that can shoot at us again and again and again. Okay, we cannot die, but that's something, you know, you can implement afterwards. And, you know, that, that's it. That's our enemy. And now, if we now, you know, shoot it, there's no bullet coming again because, you know, we destroyed the real enemy itself. Thank you for watching this last part. Please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. I hope I will see you in future videos and by the way, I will make some more tutorials. Just this little series comes to an end now. Bye!